think we're live. I'll wait till some people actually start showing up here. Oh, hey, Dan. Okay, cool. My coach is here, so that's good enough for me. Um, so guys, I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about tips and tricks and ultimately techniques that I personally use and that we use here at JGA and at Glover U to help agents get out of a negative state of mind and out of that whole, like, I'm in a funk mindset and ultimately step back into their power so that you guys can all get back into production. Okay. So I wrote down a couple notes for you guys that I wanted to share in regards to what we really do here at JGA to flip the switch. Okay. Now, just to give you some context, um, you'll hear me say that phrase a couple times, flip the switch. And ultimately it was a phrase that, um, Jeff came up with for our agents to kind of let them know that, Hey guys, I understand you have lives out there. I understand that you have things that are going on in your world, but as soon as you walk through that door, you're on it's game time and we need to flip the switch. Right. So it, it became a term that we all use now, uh, you know, internally and with one another that when we notice somebody's kind of in a negative state of mind, we can just say to them, all right, Christy, you know, flip the switch. All right, Kate, flip the switch. And it helps them understand that, OK, this moment has passed. This bad day has passed. I've got to get my head back on straight so I can get back to work. OK. And honestly, I would say that this whole concept of flipping the switch is really one of our secret weapons. Um, there's nothing very secretive about it whatsoever, other than the fact that we as a company, um, we don't let each other off the hook when it comes to having a strong mindset and doing the things we know we need to do to get back in production and get over whatever it is that's kind of slowing us down. So because we all have a, you know, collectively a highly accountable mindset, it helps us get back into production quicker and ultimately get over whatever it is that's kind of slowing us down. Okay. So I wanted to share with all of you guys, the tips and the tricks that we use internally. Um, and that I myself have been practicing for a couple of years now. Okay. So first I wrote down, take a mindset break. Okay. So if you had a bad phone call with a client, um, bad negotiation just went south, the agent just called you and said that they're going to be, you know, backing out of the deal. The, if you sense that your mindset and your mood is getting to a place that you can't necessarily quickly recover from, get up, get out of your chair, take a lap around, you know, wherever your office is. Um, obviously when I lived in California, this was a little bit easier because it was sunny all the time. Right? So it was always enjoyable to actually get outside and to take a lap. Um, you know, right now I know Michigan weather is still pretty good. So you can still walk out there, get some fresh air, clean your hand, you know, clean your mind, cleanse your mind and, um, practice stepping away from whatever it is that's mentally distracting you right now. Uh, now, of course, you know, fall's coming, winter's coming for all those cold months or cold states out there. Um, so what we recommend is, you know, find something funny to watch, you know, find something that's ultimately going to like improve your mood. And we also recommend um, having a list of go-to motivational videos and or favorite songs that you love listening to. Okay. So you can almost kind of create like your own mindset bomb shelter. Um, some of our agents, they do this, they have a file on their desktop that they know they can go into that file. They can read things, they can watch videos and everything in that file is supposed to support their mindset. Okay. Um, so when I'm coaching agents, I'll recommend all those past client reviews, put them in there. All the text messages you get from clients where they say, oh my gosh, Krista, you're a complete lifesaver. Like I couldn't have gotten through this transaction without you. Put that in there, screenshot it, save it, put it in that folder because there's going to come a day where you need to see that and you're going to need that validation to know that you are a great agent. What's going on right now is momentary. And ultimately the sooner you can get over it, the sooner you can ultimately get back into production. Okay. So number one is take a mindset break. Um, so some of you might already know this, but at JGA, our culture is for our agents to ultimately get into the office every single day by 7 30, 8 AM. They're on the phones and their cold calling expires in FISBOs from 8 AM all the way until 11 and 12. Okay. So for those of you who cold call on a regular basis, you can understand how three to four hours of daily prospecting can really take a toll on your mindset. 
So what a lot of our agents started doing is they would stop in the middle of the day at 12, they would totally reset, and they would go to the gym and they would turn off their phone and they'd get an awesome workout in. Um, it started with a couple agents and, you know, everybody's kind of got their own, you know, their own feeling for when they want to get their workout in. But we noticed a huge majority of them were doing this in the middle of the day. They come back in the office around 1.32, they were dressed professional again, they were like ready to go, and they were calm and had a clear mindset for their appointments in the afternoon. So we started kind of asking them and saying, hey, I notice you love to work out here rather than in the morning or night, tell me more about that. And so what we found is a lot of our agents actually said, you know what, Kate, you know what, Jeff, being able to stop in the middle of the day and work out, get some frustration out, clear my head, do something for me, it actually reset my mindset so I can start the day again at 1.32 and go out and kill those appointments that I set, okay? So, you know, our agents do it by working out in the middle of the day. You can, you know, read a book, you can listen to a podcast, you can watch some YouTube videos. There is no right or wrong when it comes to kind of taking a mindset break, but it is important to have those things on deck when you know you're gonna need it because trust me, when you're in that negative state of mind, the last thing you want to be doing is Googling what's a positive YouTube video or what makes me feel good right now. So you almost have to have that prepared ahead of time in anticipation for those days that you're going to need it. Okay. So just to recap, number one, first point is when you're in that state where you have a choice to make on whether you're going to flip the switch or whether you're going to stay in that bad mindset, your, your first choice there is to completely step away from it take a mindset break. Okay. So that's number one. Number two, this is, this is going to be a challenging one for some of you set a deadline. Okay. So if something happened and you're angry or you're upset or you're having a bad day, if you're, if you're starting to kind of spiral and not be able to pull yourself out of it, you need to give yourself a deadline. Okay. For some of you cutting that down to even half the day is going to be a big ask. Okay. For me to say, Hey, I know you're having a bad day, but let's keep it to a bad four hours rather than eight hours. That could be a big ask for some of you. And it's something that you'll have to start working towards. For me personally, 15 minutes max is the most amount of time I'm willing to complain about something, be negative about something, be angry about something, you know, rave about something to Jeff. I mean, that is the most amount of time before we collectively have agreed. Okay, Kate, minute 15. Now what, what's your solution? Okay. Now this helps me. Number one, it's going to help me feel heard, feel validated, kind of get it off my chest and sort through it. Because I understand that, um, you know, if you're, if you're more of an expressive personality style, talking through things is going to be very important. Um, it's important though, that if your goal is to get over it and get over it quick, you've got to set a time frame for how long you're willing to stay in that mode. Okay. Now that becomes challenging. Because we have to ask ourselves, what do we get out of that emotion of being angry? What do we get out of that emotion of having a bad day? And you guys aren't going to like what I'm going to say, but here it is. It's a victim mentality. It's a mindset. Okay. When you find yourself holding on to that negative thing that happened to you or that thing that somebody said or that thing that somebody did to you, guess what? You're squeezing a heck of a lot of that juice out of that victim, out of that victim mode, whatever you want to call it. And you have to admit in one way, shape or form, you're upset about it, but the longer you want to linger there, it's because there's an emotional payoff to you. Okay. So first things first, you have to get rid of that, get over that, staying in that space, that payoff, nobody's feeling bad for you. Staying in that victim state is not going to change ultimately the direction of your day, the direction of your business. Granted, if you stay there, it's actually going to hold you back. Okay, so unless you're solutions oriented in your dialogue and you just need a minute to kind of blow off steam, give yourself a time frame. Otherwise, a bad day, a bad half day is going to turn into a bad day. A bad day is going to turn into a bad week. And sooner or later, we're going to be talking about how you spent the whole month of September, you know, ticked off that sellers aren't behaving the way that they used to be behaving in the spring and summer. Okay, so give yourself a timeline on how long you're willing to stay in that space, fully recognizing that as long as you're in that space, you are not solving the problem. You are not giving, you know, you're not solutions oriented. And by the way, for a small period of time, that's okay. You don't have to constantly jump from something bad happened to me and, oh, I need to fix it. Okay. There can be a gap of time. My goal isn't to eliminate that for you guys. My goal is to help you shorten it 
so that you can get back on the horse and back into production as quick as possible, okay? So just reviewing number two, set a, di set a deadline for how long you want to feel that feeling, okay? Number three I wrote down. This is another hard one. You guys, we have to get in the habit of thinking before we share something, okay? There's, there's no limit to the amount of things that happen to you in a day that are either idiotic, somebody cut you off, you know, somebody was mean to you on the phone, you can't believe your seller asked for that in the negotiation, oh my gosh, you can't believe that your family member's acting like this. There is literally no limit to the amount of crap that comes into our world every day if we let it, okay? But the first thing we have to do to kind of rip it out by the roots is really think before we want to share this with somebody else, okay? Number one, you guys have to understand that when you're in that bad space or you just got cut off or, you know, somebody cut in front of you at Starbucks, whatever the case may be, when you make that choice to spew that to your reception desk or talk to that, you know, talk to your co-op agent in the office about what's going on, you're kind of stealing their time and you're being a bummer, quite frankly. Like, unless you have something that's going to, like, help bring them up or uplift them, like, dude, give them a break. Don't even talk about it, right? Like, you're, you're only going to bring other people down the more that you're talking about it. And number two, you're perpetuating that feeling within yourself and you're making that live on right? So you guys, we can probably all relate to this. We can all think of like that one nightmare deal that we've all had. Something goes terribly south. Maybe the deal fell apart. Doesn't really matter, right? But at the end of the day, if I sat you down right now and said, Garrett, tell me all about that. How did that make you feel? What did that agent do? Oh my gosh, I can't believe that agent did that to you. You're going to start to feel pretty irritated again. You're going to go right back to that place. So there's really a couple of goals when I tell you guys to think before you share. Number one, it's to be mindful of the people around you, right? You know, there could be somebody who comes in the office having a great day, but because you got cut off or something else happened, you're kind of spewing that negativity on them. And then they're like, oh yeah, it's Tuesday. I guess today does kind of suck. I guess I am having a bad day. I guess everybody on the phone really is being kind of mean. And they start to go into that spiral too. Okay, so understand if you're in a highly accountable environment, like our team, you have a personal responsibility to your own energy and your own mindset because it can quickly become a liability to somebody else. And we certainly don't want that. So think before you share. Now, there is a caveat to this, you guys, because I don't necessarily recommend that you all stay in a silo, you know, when you're dealing with challenging deals, when you're having a bad day, when a family member just, you know, gets diagnosed with, you know, some kind of sickness. I mean, all of that is tough stuff, okay? Um, I'm not going to pretend like that isn't important stuff to discuss and important stuff to talk about. What I can say is so long as your conversations with another person are solutions oriented and they come from a place of, okay, now help me get through this. Okay, now help me understand how I can get better because of this. If they're focused towards solutions, they're okay. Having said that, once you have the solution, once you know the next action step, once you know what you need to do to change the situation move on from it, okay? We're not talking again about how that client was such a jerk, I can't believe it. We're not bringing it up again, oh my gosh, can you believe that? And saying, have you heard anything else? What about now? Are they still pissing you off? We're not doing that. We're not bleeding into the situation. We're having solutions-focused conversations in an effort to get you from here up to there, okay? So number three was think, guys. Think before we actually start sharing this information with other people. Can it really help them? Is there something they can learn here? Or are we doing it just to get it off our chest? Okay. Getting it off your chest is quite honestly, it's a fancy way to say like you're being negative and you're not really bringing anything to the table as far as the conversation goes. Okay. So be very mindful of that. Number four, we've got to stop ritualizing bad days. Okay. I hear it all the time um, when agents have a bad calling session, they're going to go out lunch, you know, they're going to go out to lunch with the girls, they're going to have a couple drinks, they're going to extend it to a longer lunch because I just need girl time, I just need to get out there, I just need to like take a break from everything, okay? We have to stop putting a reward at the end of the rainbow of having a bad day, okay? We need to stop coming home at the end of the day and collapsing into the couch with two or three drinks and a pint of ice cream because we had a bad day. Why? Because your whole bad day ritual doesn't sound so bad, right? 
hanging out, having a pint of ice cream, extra long lunch with the girls. Sounds great to me, right? So until you start actually um, being accountable for the bad day and coming up with a solution for it, rather than saying, I had a bad day, so I deserve this cupcake. I had a bad day, so I'm going to stay out later, have a couple drinks, and then guess what? A couple drinks turns into one too many. You sleep in the next day. You miss your calling session. You roll into the office at 1030. All the expires have been picked over, and guess what happens? Another bad day, okay? So don't ritualize it. Don't make it a thing because, again, back to the previous point, you're only putting more juice on that fire. Like, you're only putting more gasoline on that fire the longer you talk about it and the more you kind of make it a thing. Okay. Now, if we're going to make anything a thing, if we're going to ritualize anything, find out what went wrong. What led to that bad day, bad moment in your day? Was it a miscommunication with a client? Was it not setting correct expectations on pricing? Was it not properly doing a buyer uh, consultation? So now you've got unrealistic buyers, right? Dig deep to find out what can I, Kate, do? What can I personally take ownership for so that it never happens again? And if you're going to ritualize anything, ritualize digging deep in your scenario of having a bad day and taking ownership for it and fixing it so it never happens again. Okay? So if we're going to ritualize anything, ritualize being self-aware and asking yourself, what did I do to contribute to this situation? What did I do to make this a thing? Ritualize that, come up with a solution around that, and then move on. Okay? Number five, on what to do to flip the switch and to get out of a bad day. You guys, we've got to challenge the story that we're telling ourselves. Um, so what I'm going to reference right now is not me. Uh, this actually came from Brene Brown. So um, for those of you who are unfamiliar, Brene Brown, you can find her. She did an incredible TED Talk on vulnerability. And um, she's also got a documentary on Netflix. It's called Call to Courage. Okay, it's like 45 minutes long. It's incredible. And she does this whole study on human behavior and how vulnerability, while it's seen as a huge weakness within humanity, is actually one of the biggest strengths. So side talk on that. It's incredible. Go watch it right now. But one of the points she makes in that talk is, what's the story you're telling yourself? Okay? So when something happens to you, what's the story you're telling yourself about what's going on? Okay? And the best example I have would be this. Um, an agent spends a good chunk of time, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they're prospecting, they finally set two listing appointments, oh my gosh, they're so excited, and one of the listing appointments calls back and cancels. In that moment, that agent has a choice. They can either spiral with the thoughts of, oh my gosh, I'm not good enough, maybe they looked at my production and they see that I'm a new agent, maybe they know that I'm not as good as so-and-so down the street, Oh my gosh, I'm not on any billboards. That means, you know, they probably went with that other guy who has so many billboards, right? So look at how you're deciding for them why they cancel the appointment. Full well, ignoring the fact that they're a real whole human being with a life outside of selling real estate, and they could have had a death in the family. One of them could have just lost their job. They could have, you know, had a child who just injured themselves and they need to stay in that house. There's so many different things outside of your self-worth that could happen that would cause somebody to not be ready to meet with you, okay? So something I want you guys to really pay attention to, and by the way, this, has, this is not exclusive to real estate. This can be for anything in your life when you feel like a friend might be ignoring you or you feel like somebody doesn't like you or you feel like, oh my gosh, these things keep happening to me. Ask yourself what story you're truly telling yourself and whether or not that's valid and whether that's real, okay? Nine times out of 10, guys, it's not. You'll notice that Brene Brown calls it the story you're telling yourself, not the ultimate truth, okay? It's a story. So if we have an opportunity to tell ourselves a story, what story do you want to tell yourselves? Do you want to tell yourselves a story about how you're a crap agent and you can never take listings? Or the story about you did an amazing job setting the appointment, something happened, and you'll keep doing your job so that you'll get that listing the next week right? In every opportunity, you guys, and this goes for personal relationships, friendships, it doesn't matter. You have an opportunity to choose which rabbit hole you're going to go down. And you have to ask yourself, are the thoughts I'm thinking about this thing serving me or helping me? Or are they making me feel like crap? Okay, so practice challenging yourself and rewriting that story. Now, how do you do this, right? Like, especially when you're in that mode where you're spiraling, like, 
if I find myself in that mode, I will physically force myself for every little negative reason that I write down for why I'm spiraling down. I have to force myself to write an opposite story to that. Okay. And then when I have two next to me, I get to pick which one I want to believe. If I still want to stay in that space where I'm believing that negative story, I guess I could, or I could believe this story over here that makes me feel better and is just as real as this negative story over here. Okay, guys, we have to understand, and this is just a little side note, you guys have to start getting to the point where every single thought that crosses your mind is not ultimate truth. Every single thing that you think does not make it real. Okay, so if we have an opportunity to actually evaluate our thoughts and pick and choose our thoughts, which ones are we going to pick? Okay, start practicing for every negative thought that you have, for every little spiral moment, you better be just as prepared to play devil's advocate for yourself in order to get out of it, okay? So number five, challenge the story that you're telling yourself in order to help you flip the switch sooner. Can you guys like feel that for a second? Like if a client cancels with you, I want you to really sit, sit with that for a second. If I just get off the phone with a client, I'm like, oh my God, they just canceled the appointment. I could spend the rest of my day or week thinking it's something about me. And then I go home and I'm in a bad mood and then I feel like crap with my husband and then I really don't want to do a workout because, hey, I'm a crappy agent anyway, so I can't really complete the workout because I'm just feeling like crap about myself right? Or I can choose to say, you know what? This person probably has a lot of other things that I'm not privy to. I'm going to give them the, the, the respect and the space to make this decision without making it about me. Okay, guys, because you have to notice something. Your story is always about you. It's never about somebody else. It always has to do with what's going on in your mind, and it never has to do with what could potentially be happening outside of yourself. So understand, guys, when we're spiraling with our story, it's very egocentric. And we're all guilty of it. We all get there from time to time. But understand it has nothing to do with anybody else, okay? So if we're going to stay in that space, we've got to practice finding the good and, and telling the good story along with the bad, okay? Now, if you can give me a list of all the great reasons why they could have canceled, or rather not great, but all the reasons outside of you that they could have canceled, you know, maybe they have to work late that day. Maybe they forgot about their kid's soccer game. If you can give me a list of those, I would ask you, cool, which story feels better? Which one do you want to sit with right now? And then you get to make that choice, okay? Number six, next on how to flip the switch when you're having a bad day. You guys, we have to get better and more skilled at detaching ourselves from our feelings. Okay, so number six is detach yourself from the feelings. You guys, we need to realize very quickly that we are not the same as our feelings, okay? Feelings are gonna come and go, and if you're at all into yoga, if you're at all into meditation, you'll hear the analogy that they say, feelings and emotions are kinda like clouds passing in the sky, okay? They're gonna be there for a little bit, and then they're gonna pass, and the next day there's gonna be new clouds, and you're gonna forget about the old ones, okay? So we've gotta stop being in a position where we're reactive to every little thing that moves the emotion needle. There's gonna be things that occur in the day, right? Somebody's going to take a parking spot that you were patiently waiting for. Somebody's going to cut in line. And for no reason or another, some people are just going to be not nice to you. Okay. And you've got to decide that feeling of pain, that feeling of rejection. How long do you want to actually sit there? So here's an interesting fact. Um, recently, a study came out that the actual feeling of rejection fires the same way in the brain as real physical pain. Okay, so like when you touch a hot stove or when hot coffee spills on you, it actually registers the same way in your brain when somebody rejects you. Okay, so the actual feeling of rejection, the actual feeling of things not going well, that's real, right? Like that's how our body processes rejection. Having said that, we don't have to stay there, right? Or more specifically, um, it's better to observe that feeling in a, in a, in a small time in motion and then let it go. Okay. Now for some of you, you could be thinking, Kate, let it go. Oh my gosh. How do you do that? And quite frankly, for those of you who know me personally, you know, this is not an easy thing for me. I don't let things go. Right. But I'm getting better at recognizing that feelings don't need to dictate direction. Feelings don't need to dictate action. They can stay in this space and you can observe them here, but then show up a different version of yourself over here. You don't have to 
act on every single thing that you feel. Okay. Another thing I'd recommend for all of you, if you don't already have some sort of, um, you know, mindset or meditation practice, um, excuse me, Headspace is an app that I use on my iPhone. It's an awesome app that you can use for guided meditations. They can even send you like little tips throughout the day just to be mindful. So if you're kind of wondering like, where do I even start with gaining more mindset or gaining a stronger mindset and stuff like that, start with meditation. Um, doing anything mindful like that, that's just focused on strengthening how your brain reacts to things is going to help you tremendously. Um, number seven on how to flip the switch or how to get out of a bad day sooner, find anchor points in your day. Okay. So what I mean by anchor points is this, you essentially have to have, um, little spots throughout your day that, you know, you're going to pause and you're going to do whatever mindset activity you need to do. That's going to elevate your mood, right? So on point number one, we talked about having a folder on your desktop to kind of read all your pos positive reviews and watch positive videos. That could be an anchor point in your day. Stopping at noon to work out, that could be an anchor point in your day. You know, having a gratitude routine in the morning, that could be an anchor point in your day. So I recommend doing it um, first thing in the morning, noon, and then at night, just to really bring your mindset back. It also, for me personally, it helps me segment my day so that I'm not letting something that happened at 1030 touch my day at 630. You see what I'm saying? So at 1030, even if I didn't flip the switch in 15 minutes, like I say that I do, guess what? My mindset routine at 12 is going to wipe that out. Okay. Now my mindset routine at five or six is going to wipe that out again before I have a chance to bring that home to my husband and to my family. Okay. So find anchor points in your day where you get to breathe, you get to kind of deal with whatever's, you know, screwing your mindset up and you get to move on and put it behind you. So journaling, uh, that can be one working out, um, you know, calling an accountability partner or somebody who's like your mindset partner, that can be another anchor point. Um, and there's probably things that I'm not even listing on here. So for those of you who are watching, I'd be curious um, if you have like an anchor point or something that you know you can do to get you out of a bad mood quickly, I'd love to kind of hear what works for you guys so I can include it in my notes in the future. Um, let me see if that's, I got two more points for you guys, okay? Number eight on how to flip the switch. Create a mindset group or a mindset routine. And honestly, guys, sometimes it's going to require you to audit your circle. Okay. So by now, this is not a new quote. All of you have heard this before. You're ultimately going to be an average of the five people you most associate yourself with. So number one, make sure you're surrounding yourself by people who are just as accountable and just as committed to taking a responsible, you know, approach towards managing their moods and managing their mindset. Okay. Another one of my favorite quotes here is by Eleanor Roosevelt. Roosevelt. It says, small minded people discuss other people, average minded people discuss events, and then great minds discuss ideas and how to get better. Guys, when I'm talking about a mindset routine and I'm talking about masterminding with people to get a better mindset, I'm talking about number three, which was great minds discuss ideas and how to get there. Um, so for, for those of you who, you know, kind of follow closely on Facebook, you'll notice that um, I'm part of another mindset group that, you know, actually one of my coaching clients started. Um, it's called Journey for Mindful Growth. Okay. Now it's a private group. You know, we pretty much accept everybody to it, but the rule is pretty simple. Okay. And it's, you have a positive mindset and you're growth minded and you're there to talk about solutions and how to get better. We're not there to complain. Okay. We moderate pretty heavily on making sure that negativity and victim mindset doesn't stay in the thread. Now, granted, if somebody's growing through, you know, victim mindset, we'll ask good questions of, okay, great. And where can we personally take responsibility and okay, great. And what can you do about this? And we'll try to get that person back solutions oriented to say, okay, this is on you. We can kind of help you through this. Um, but ultimately guys, it's, it's a very positive group of people. I think we have like 2000 people in it now and we share challenges, but we also share how we get through them. Okay. This is not a head in the clouds, happy go lucky group. And I mean, quite frankly, a lot of the members right now are working through some pretty heavy stuff and we welcome that, but we want to help them work through it with a positive, responsible mindset, rather than it just becoming this like Facebook thing where everybody dishes and talks about their bad day without taking any personal responsibility for it. Okay. Now you can set this up within your office. You can set this up with your circle of friends. Um, you can start your own Facebook group if that's what you want to do. But ultimately, guys, 
you've got to have a group of people that will not let you off the hook when you start sliding in that victim direction. Look, I'll be honest with you. My friends know this about me. I am not the soft place to land if you come with a problem. Like if you want to go get drinks with me and gossip and talk crap about other people, like I will shut down very quickly. And that's not a situation I want to be a part of. Now, having said that, if you want to say, hey, Kate, let's grab coffee, let's grab tea. I really want to chat with you about what's going on and how I can get better. That's something that I'll probably respond to. Okay. But you have to stop bleeding into those relationships and conversation that ultimately kind of make you feel like crap. Okay. And you have to be surrounded by people who are willing to call you on your crap and say, you know what, Kate, you can do better. Um, this started very early on um, with Christy, Jeff's sister, actually. And we, we would have this phrase and every time we'd say it, I knew that stuff was going south, but we never acknowledged it. We just picked each other up and Christy would text me or I would text Christy and I'd say, tell me, excuse me, I would say, tell me something great. And she knew in that moment, something happened. I'm spiraling. I need to hear some great things. And she'd send me cat pictures or she'd send me something funny. And it was just enough of a distraction to know that what I was feeling in that moment's temporary. And now I'm distracted and I'm on to the next thing. Okay. And, and like, she'll still text me that, you know, uh, every once in a while and I'll text her. And now we've got other people texting us that. And it's kind of like this thing. It's like, tell me something great. Okay. And when you can get out of your own space of victim mindset and hear other positive things going on with other people, tell me that's not going to make you in a good mood. Okay. And then from there, you have a choice to keep, to either take that high road and stay in that positive mood, or you can go back to that negative. and uh, keep that positive mindset. So it says I'm losing connection. Let me see if this is working. 